What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, we're gonna look at some of my favorite techniques when making a movie scene in DaVinci Resolve 17. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what I was able to accomplish and how with the right techniques, you can take a pretty small, simple situation and make it look huge. So let's take a look at what I was able to put together for you guys. And then we'll take a deeper dive into the edit, the audio and the color. So as much as we all dream of working with huge movie studio budgets and pyrotechnics and explosions and jets flying overhead, sometimes you're just not there yet. And all you have is one camera, one gimbal, and a friend. And in that situation, I grabbed my business partner, Shane, and said, hey, Shane, how do you feel about being some kind of John Wick type character? Like a Shane Wick type character. He was like, sure, man. I was like, can we use your garage? Do you know anybody with some props? Cause we're gonna need a lot of props. As a matter of fact, the only thing not shot in Shane's garage was the opening shot, uh, which is from the sponsor of this video, Art Grid. Great place to get stock footage, and not just stock footage, but modern stock footage. Almost anything you get from ArtGrid will not just accentuate your video project, but it will elevate it to a next more modern level. So I highly suggest signing up for ArtGrid now. Use the link in my description below and back to Shane Wick. The coolest thing about doing all this in-house is I can actually offer this to you all. So leave a like below if you guys would actually like me to do a series on you know preparing this project, editing, sound design, color, exporting. I could do deep dives on all those subjects upload the footage for you guys to download and follow along to. But for now, let's just jump into some of my techniques that I used to get this to where it is now. So obviously we're gonna kick things off with the edit uh, because it's all based around the edit and a well-paced edit that does not distract the audience is really where we wanna start. And one rule of thumb when it comes to editing is you do not want the audience to notice your edit. You want them to see what the camera's showing and not what the camera's doing. Uh, so you can see that I kind of went with really slow sweeping shots here, really smooth camera movement uh, that really just kind of tells the story. You know, the guy pulls into the garage, he gets out of the garage, he starts unloading his props uh, and then starts getting new props ready. You know, the classic locked and loaded scene. Um, and then, you know, it kind of picks up pace as he gets more into action, locks and loads, and then he's ready to go. And that really tells all it is. And I don't feel like at any point in this um, edit, are you kind of thinking like, oh, that was a weird camera choice, or that was a weird camera placement, or maybe that was shaky. And one good example of this is in Game of Thrones, the whole dark thing, I think, uh, in The Last War. Everybody was saying, it's so dark, it's so dark, it's so dark. They were complaining less about what the story actually held and what happened in the story. Everybody was way so much more wrapped into, it was so dark, I couldn't even really pay attention to what was going on. Um, you see this in fight scenes sometimes, uh, kind of an amateur fight scene to me. Uh, you can't tell what's going on. The camera's so shaky that you can't tell who's winning. And obviously if I'm watching a movie and the main character gets into a fight scene, I mean, I'm watching on pins and needles seeing like, oh, is the main character gonna win? I I've spent all this time, uh, you know, falling in love with the character, kind of uh, getting involved with the character. And now, you know, the camera's so shaky, I can't see what's going on. That's the worst. You never want the camera movement or any stage of production to distract from the actual visual and what you're trying to get across to the audience. And one way I do this and get good pacing is by cutting to music. That's something I've talked about before. And if you are a beginner in video editing, I, I, I say it's like a must. You have to, to cut to music because it's just a, such a quick and easy way to get comfortable with good edit pacing. So if I turn on our music here, you'll see that I've cut every clip to the beat of the song. Here's a cut here, cut two, three, four, and cut, 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 and 
One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, cut, 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 two, three, one, two, three, cut, two, three, one, two, three, cut, two, three, one, two. So this is the kind of thing that I actually started in music production, so it may come a little quicker to me than than others, but I highly suggest you get comfortable with music and where beats are um, and, and try to work off those beats because even when I turn the music off, I feel like because I cut to the music, the pacing of the cuts just feels natural. Nothing feels too quick or off-putting. Nothing feels surprising. It just kind of flows. And I think that's because it's already been put to a beat uh, that flows and something that's already been tested and works really well. And the music's from Artlist, so make sure to check out Artlist if you haven't. And the next thing I'm gonna go over is turning boring shots into bangers. Now, of course, you know, you're on set, there's a million things happening. I mean, obviously this is not the most professional situation, but even when you're in the most professional situation, I mean, it almost seems like the more people you add to a project, the more likely you'll make something epic, but also the more likely things will get screwed up in the process. And in post, you'll kind of have to make up for it. So, and that's where turning boring into bangers uh, really helps out. So if we just go with this first shot here, it's a pretty cool shot uh, of the Range Rover coming into the garage with this little light flare happening on uh, the bullets, which is really cool. But what I did was just add a simple lens flare. Um, it was a pretty cool lens flare. And you can already see when I play this back, it kind of comes in with this red glow and it kind of moves around. And what I love about this one is I really picked one that if I actually mute the, the main video track and come back to this, you can see that it really moves around, which really helps because our shot in itself has lighting that really moves around the scene. So if you just had one kind of light glare with all this different light movement actually happening, then it wouldn't seem that realistic and it wouldn't seem that magical. Um, but now with this cool kind of lens flare in there that already has this motion and magic to it, um, it, it really allows for this one shot to kind of even pull you in a little bit more and seem like, man, they really nailed that cinematography. They had that camera in the exact right place for the tail light to shine the red light on the lens. And it's like, no, we, we didn't, we didn't at all. Uh, I didn't even think about that until afterwards. And I put in the lens flare and, um, other things that you can do is if your lens flare isn't uh, oriented correctly, you can come over to the inspector and flip. You can see that I flipped this one because initially the glow was on this side. And to me, it, it still worked, but it almost filled the frame with more magic when I flipped it. And now you're seeing the light on the right side, but the glow is happening on the left side of the lens. It, just that little kind of thing is what really kind of helps make the whole shot seem magical. And so let's we move forward. I recently did a how to fix a bad shot video. And this would be a good shot to do a how to fix a bad shot number two. Uh, if I go into the color and then go to this clip in particular, bah, 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 here we are. And you can see this node grid is pretty large. Uh, if I deactivate the node tree, boom. You can see that it's a pretty flat image. I know it's, it's flat because it's, it's log, it's raw from the Black Magic 6K. But uh, you can see that there's a ton of noise here. So if I reactivate this and then I will deactivate everything and then the noise reduction, I'll go through these one by one. So you can kind of see how I turn this shot from being super boring to somewhat banger. Um, and so first thing was the noise reduction and you see the noise reduction really helped. Uh, my noise reduction settings are right here. Uh, I had the Luma and the Chrome. I had this all cranked pretty high because I think this was the 120 FPS in 2K from the 6K. So this is uh, not 6K, it's 2K, I believe. And it was really dark in there. So I really had to do a lot to get some of that noise out. And you you always wanna leave a little bit of noise because if you make it look too smooth and it just won't seem real, a little bit of noise will kind of give it that gritty realism uh, that you, you definitely want to keep. And then from there, let's move on. I made a tiny exposure adjustment. And then from there, I put on the Black Magic LUT for the 6K. Uh, it's pretty standard. And one thing with dark shots is with dark shots, it's, it's you don't want to try to raise the entire shot. Um, if you can, if it's a really dark shot where a lot of things are crushed and you got a lot of noise, to raise the entire scope of the shot, you're, you're gonna be kind of causing a lot of destruction. And you may get noise all over the image. So it's best to just try to raise the things that you want the audience to look at. And so from here in this shot in particular, I started just to try to raise his face. 
and the highlights in the shot instead of trying to raise everything in the car because that's just it's just not going to work. Um, so if what I did was if I activate this, you can see I made a qualifier where you could just see his skin and these highlights coming from the right side. And if I deactivate, activate, you can see that helped bring things up without um, affecting the entire image, which a lot of this would have fallen apart instantly because I just don't think there's information here uh, to even raise. And then in the next one, I made a mask around his face. And then if I activate that, I brighten just his face with that mask. And then of course I tracked that mask. So throughout the shot, it stays in place. And then in this next one, let's see here. Uh, in this next one, I actually didn't like this uh, garage door opener. Uh, it just seemed distracting. You know, in this part of the scene, I really want you to see that this guy just got back from, you know, possibly causing a lot of destruction and he's crazy. You don't know what he's into, but you can see it on his face that whatever he's into, it ain't good. And I wanted to, to really emphasize that in the color grade. And, uh, and this just, this garage door opener and the clarity of the window overall, just, it really took away from just look at the guy, look at the face, just look at the face. And so I created another node and then I made a little blur on half of this window, almost making like a completely fake tilt shift lens distortion-esque thing where I did a, a, a parallel mask uh, or not a parallel mask, but a gradient mask, a gradient mask in the mask section, and then just added a, a blur, uh, an effect blur, the lens blur. And from there, I might've played with uh, some lighting a little bit. Um, it looks like I brought the exposure down slightly uh, to hide some more stuff. But overall, uh, that was about it to, to kind of get rid of that distraction. And then from there, I wanted to bring out his face a little bit more. So what I ended up doing was sharpening the image with this node and then raising the contrast with this node, really helping his face pop out a little bit more and bringing less attention to all this fuzziness over here. And then I made two more nodes, bring his face out in luminance a little more. I've got a qualifier on this node here where you can see I really kind of just masked the highlights of his face and brought those up with the primaries bars. And you can see that adds a little bit of punch in his face, a little more punch, giving a little more attention and emphasis to the face. And then one more on just the, the highlights of the cheek there to add a little bit more depth. And if I were to take away just these qualifying um, light lifters around his face, these kind of re, uh, re-lighting techniques. You see how much flatter the image is without those techniques? It's crazy. It's insane. Like right now, without them, my eyes are drawn over here. They're drawn right here to this little uh, highlight on the rim of this garage door opener, maybe even on the water bottle, on the steering wheel. His face is just not what my eyes are drawn to. So just by adding those layers of, of depth to his face, we have brought the eye straight to the face. So now the second this comes up, you're not looking at anything but the face. And, and it's awesome. And I ended up doing some sound design as well to the shot that even helps bring the attention to his face even more because you can bring attention to what you want people to look at through sound as well, as crazy as that is. So if I just get uh, deactivate everything before the LUT, you can see that this was the image with the LUT. I mean, this is a great camera shooting in a, Pretty a pretty dark but okay environment uh, with the standard LUT. It looks pretty bad. And just with that, we've really emphasized the shot and really brought a lot more magic to it. And of course, back in the edit, I actually added a flare to that shot as well. So you got a little bit of a blue glow coming from up here, uh, which isn't quite practical because I don't know why there'd be a blue light hanging from the top of the garage. But in this garage, Shane Wick just has such a dope garage. It glows blue at all times. So really cool shot. Um, and let's see if there's anything else. This is another shot I added a really cool glow to. Um, if I take away the main shot and just go with the lens flare, see there's some nice shimmers, man, some nice shimmers. Now, are those realistic? Would these props ever glow like that? No, not in a million years. Uh, with, in any lens combination, would these probably glow like that? But that is completely okay. And as long as it's done tastefully and subtly, uh, then you can get a really good image. And I'll say for most of my lens flares, most of them are down on opacity. This is not only set to screen, but it's down on opacity. It's down to 15. So that's really not much at all. If I were to crank this, you would see that it's 
pretty wild and a little outrageous. Now it looks like some kind of Chanel commercial, some kind of crazy like diamond. Diamonds are forever. Some kind of crazy. Anyway, back to 15 for this. And now it's barely noticeable. You just kind of, ah, you just get a little more magic. Ah, just a little more magic. Okay, so let's dip down into the sound design uh, since we've done so much good work up here and our techniques to put together a good edit. And in our sound design, I'm gonna lift this up real fast. And one thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna listen to everything without the music and just the sound design. So you guys can really hear what's going on and how you can see that even without the music, you guys could edit to the music just to get good pacing and then just drop the music out and just have the sound design. I know I probably just blew your mind, but think about that earlier, how we listened to the music along to the edit and then I turned off the music and it was like, yeah, this is actually paced really well even without music. It's like, so put an edit together to music and then you can just cut the music out and then you have a really well-paced edit um, that you know you may not even need the music or you may have not planned to use music. You may just want to use sound. So let's mute the music and just take a listen to the sound design. Now, again, you know, are some of those sounds really what that situation would have sounded like? You know, I got to be honest, none of those sounds were from the day of shooting. Um, some of the sounds I went back and had Shane just like play with some of the, the props to get some of those sounds, you know, reloading and stuff like that. Um, but every sound that you just heard was put in in post and was not... Um, any of the actions that you actually saw that day. Um, so uh, not all of them are real and that is totally fine. That is totally fine because it still sucks you in. It still immerses you. And oftentimes in actual movies, the sound design, the color uh, grading, uh, the edit, the effects are over the top. Now they're done in tasteful, subtle ways, but they are done over the top to pull you in even more, to make you feel immersed in a situation even more. Uh, and that's kind of what you want to do here. In a subtle way, you kind of want to send all the senses over the top. And so, you know, we're starting with a really simple, you know, just the sound of the streets as we're coming across this bridge. And then here in this space, I really just have the, uh, I have some space sound. So this is the space sound I'm using. I couldn't find an air conditioner sound, or I was like, what does an inside of a garage feel like? Because you want to put people in this garage. The car just pulled in the garage. The camera's in the garage. You're obviously in a garage. So you want people to feel like they're in a garage. I was like, what does the air conditioner sound like? And I pulled in like a fan, like a whoop, 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 whoop. But it just didn't sound right. It didn't sound realistic to the setting. Sometimes just ominous sounds like the space atmospheric uh, sound are perfect for setting a tone. And then you can lay something on top of that. And I think on top of that, I put in this car driving slow. So you can kind of hear that gravel and the wheel slowly. It's nice. Is it realistic? Woody, it sounds like that car's driving on rocks and there's probably not rocks in this guy's garage. There's definitely isn't, but that's okay. It really kind of still sets the tone. It, it tricks the mind and it's like, oh yeah, man, what crisp sound is coming from the wheels of that Range Rover. You don't even think about that the sound's not real. Uh, it just matters that it's there and it's implemented well, especially after the sound before it, after that interstate sound. Slowly fades up. And I don't even cut it. I slowly fade it out. And then I bring in this car engine noise. Because I want to get across that obviously the car pulls in, it stops at some point in time. Uh, so it's like you slowly fade out this car sound as this next car sound comes in. And then if I unsolo these, then I come in with that breath. Now, that is strictly superficial. I mean, obviously, 
that's not, it, it doesn't sound like a realistic situation. It doesn't sound like he's muffled breathing coming from the car. It sounds like you're hearing his breathing very clear, even though he's inside of a car and you're outside the car. Um, but I think in this case, you can do that kind of thing to set the tone, to set the intensity. And yes, it could definitely be done better. I'm not claiming to be any kind of sound design mastermind. I'm just saying um, you can use these techniques to get across a point and to get that professionalism there, even if it's not perfect. So, um, you know, just a little breathing here and then we start bringing in. <laughs> and then, you know, before I didn't have this, I actually just added this in earlier today. Um, so before it was just, we had a, some of the sounds that we recorded from him playing with some of the props and I put a reverb on him. So it's just random little clinks and clacks and stuff like that. Let me implement this one right here. And I'll turn this one on too. <laughs> it's not all like, it's not all timed well. It's, it's not all, you know, it's not perfect. Um, but the interesting thing is, is I went back and I threw in this helicopter sound if I unsolo these, I went back and threw in this helicopter sound. And you mix that with the rest. For some reason, it just works. It just feels good. It feels right. It feels ominous. It feels dark. And it feels like, dang, is that somebody? Where is this guy? Are there helicopters passing by overhead? Planes uh, landing next to him? Like, what's going on? And then for this sound right here, um, that was just a sound I got from the internet. And then that right there is some coins, man. That is some coins in leather bag movement. Why would this sound like coins in a leather bag? It wouldn't, it just wouldn't. But in this situation with the hinge on top of that, it seems right. It seems right. And we got the space atmospheric, atmospheric sounds. It feels right. It definitely throws me for a loop. So it almost feels more than right. And that's kind of what you want to pay attention to is if you could enhance these sounds and like kind of bring them more to really t hit the senses hard. I mean, man, that's cool. Oh yeah. And I gotta be honest for some of these sounds, I just grabbed something that was like, grabbed a microphone and I'm like, and I'm like, I don't know if that sounded right. So I grab a mi mouse pad. And I'm like, know what I mean? Little things like that. Just It's, it's all about having fun, uh, enjoying yourself, playing around, trying new things, and, and test out these techniques for yourself. And again, if you liked this video, definitely click that like button down below if you want me to upload this footage for all you guys to download. And we can do a whole series on how to prep the project, edit, color, sound design, the whole nine, how to pick good music. Uh, just let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you want more videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.